All right, back on the workbench with the 1968 Fender Pro Reverb. We did uh, all of the work we needed to do on the inside of the chassis, and now we're working on the doghouse. So the plan for today is to remove all of these caps and replace them because these were done back in 09, according to this. And then all of these resistors uh, measured out of spec or are just incorrect. So we're gonna go ahead and start desoldering and getting all of this stuff out of here. There's a lot of giant globs of solder everywhere, so this is probably gonna be a bit more difficult than it should be. But what's new? Installed very weird. This one's got a little hook on it. This one does not. Look at that delicious gunk. <laughs> This is what I was saying in the um, the spring reverb tank series when I added silicon. You really don't need to add that much. This is way overboard. Just makes everything a mess. There's no advantage to doing this much. All right, got all that nasty stuff off for the most part. Now we can move on to getting these 220Ks out, which measured too high. All right, let's clean out these eyelets. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and get some isopropyl and just clean the board off a little bit. Uh, actually, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait till I have all the eyelets clear. Wow, look at this discovery. This resistor wasn't even soldered into the eyelet. It was literally just resting on top like that. <laughs> Holy cow, that's insane. Imagine that. Imagine not just putting it through the eyelet and just leaving it resting like that. That's crazy. What a mess. Well, we're making progress. Wow, this is just so bad. <laughs> All of these leads just hooked around each other. This was done very poorly. I would not have uh, put my name next to all this work. Let's put it that way. And this end wasn't even hooked on anything. It's just a straight, I don't know if you can see that. It's just straight, it's kind of placed like that. So well, this wasn't an eyelet either. You know, working on old amps that I've had work done, it's kind of like, I don't know, it's like uh, archaeology or something. You're just like, what am I going to discover? Like this mess of tangled wires. What did the previous guy do? I guess that's part of the fun. All right, I've got all of these eyelets cleaned out. We got some of these leads still that are floating. I'm not sure what these are connected to. Um, I did leave a little bit of solder for each of the existing wires to stay put so that I can hopefully lift this up a little bit and just get a sense of what's under it. I might have to get this black one undone, but the rest should be able to have a little bit of lead length so I can move stuff around and see what's what. So now we're just gonna go ahead and move on to this, to the nightmare on this side. Once again, not even in the eyelet. Once again, I don't really understand installing caps without actually putting the lead of the cap into the eyelet. I, I don't know what I'm missing there, why people do that. This is the third amp I wanna say I've run into that. I mean, that just seems so lazy. All right, now we can go ahead and start using the wick to clean these up. 
Alrighty. So those are all cleaned out. Now, I think what I want to do is lift up the board a little bit and just try and determine if these leads are being used for bridging any connections, like from here to here or something, or if they're just extra and they're caught on the other end. So let's go ahead and just lift it up a little bit. Let's go ahead and lift the board, see what we got. All right, so here we got the board undone, all of the eyelets cleaned out for the most part. And uh, flipping it over, we can see that these are the bridge connections between the eyelets. However, uh, they're way too long. So the, uh, the leads are, I don't know if you'll be able to see that, are hanging over quite a bit. So uh, quite, quite messy, doesn't look great. Um, will function fine. So I don't really have time to completely redo this like I did on the Vibrolux and like clean everything perfectly. So what I'm gonna do is cut these leads shorter and uh, clean the board with some isopropyl and then we can get back up and running. So not too big of a deal here. It's more just not super pretty, um, but good to know that these leads are the bridge connections. So there's not anything caught underneath or anything like that. So that's the plan. I'm just gonna go ahead and start bending these over. We're gonna cut them. Perfect. So now let's go ahead and clean this with isopropyl. All right. Not perfect, but much better. Now let's go ahead and feed the wires back through. All right, now let's go ahead and place the wires. Actually, let's screw this in first. Let's go ahead and place these wires into the eyelets. All right, so just kind of tack solder those together just so they don't move around. Trying to hold everything in place is a bit tricky. Everything else looks pretty good. So we're gonna have two resistors here and then two resistors here. So first we'll grab the 220s. Uh, these are supposed to be one watt carbon comps. These are more modern uh, resistors, which are actually, I believe two or three watt 220s. So more than adequate for this job. And there's two. Let's go ahead and solder those in. Perfect. So now that those are in, we can go ahead and move on. So now we're gonna put in the 4.7K and 1K. So the schematic here, 4.7K is this one, which would be right here. And then the 1K would be right here. So let's go ahead and do that. So I've got these um, one watt metal films for that. So that'll go in something like that. And then the 4.7K, another metal film. Might just tack solder this in just so it doesn't move. I'm just gonna tack solder this end real quick. Perfect. All right, now we can go ahead and grab our capacitors. So the caps we got for this amp, we've got some more mod caps. So these are 70 microfarad 350 volt. Those are right here on the schematic. So this will have one positive going that way, the other positive going this way. So they'll go right there. And then the rest will be 20 microfarad 500 volt caps, which will be going there, there, and there, except for like this. 
the positive face in that direction. So now uh, we can go ahead and start staging these and we'll get the RTV out. All right, so that'll be like that. Let's grab the RTV. Fun out of the way. So unlike the last guy, we don't need to put that much on just like that. Should be more than fine. Just kind of hold it in place for a sec. Perfect. Let's go and grab the other one. So this one will be going the opposite direction. Positive going this direction. Great, now let's go and grab the silicon, do this one. Same as before, does not take much. I like to just hold it pressed down just for a few seconds to make sure it's got good contact because I want it to hold it in place for me so that I can solder the leads in so the soldered connections are not the ones holding everything down. Beautiful. So now we got to make room for the other caps. I'll go right here so we can kind of slide this over like this. Awesome. So it'll be just like that. Next one. And last one, looking sharp, if I don't say so myself. I'm kind of just eyeballing these. I don't really have a tried and true method yet on how to determine, you know, lead length and cutting them properly and all the same. I know there's tools for it. Um, but it's working okay like this, just kind of eyeballing it. I figure it's good to do it this way so you get some experience. All right, and just like that, we've got everything placed. So now we can go ahead and finally solder and wrap this project up. Fire up and hopefully everything's looking good. <laughs> All right, so everything is soldered in. Now I'm going to go over and add a little bit of dome to some of these. All right, there we go, we are done. Awesome. So now we can go ahead and flip it over, do a visual check of everything one more time, and then fire up. Sweet. Just out of curiosity, I wanna see if this will come off with isopropyl. So we're gonna go ahead and give that a shot. And the answer is not really. <laughs> Man. Just don't, I don't know why you would do that when you can just put a piece of tape in that exact same spot, but whatever. Doesn't bother the, uh, the new owner, my bandmate. So not gonna worry about it too much, but I just wanted to try. I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna bother with those. We'll just leave it part of the charm. But in the doghouse, like I did with the spring reverb tank, uh, I'm going to put a little piece of tape in here and notate the uh, notate the date when the capture changed. Or actually, I'll just put the tape over this. That kind of kills two birds with one stone there. There we go. All right, let's put the dog cover back on. I just want to share this real quick. This is how much solder came out using the solder sucker in the doghouse there. That's how much solder there, <laughs> there was. And that doesn't count all of the braid that was used. So there was so much excess in there, just crazy. Really, 
really hard to get through. So I just thought I'd share that. All right, so now we've got the amplifier plugged into the current limiter over here, which is then plugged into Variac off screen. I've got the multimeter hooked up to the middle wiper on the bias pot so we can see what the bias uh, voltage is, the negative DC. And then um, after I confirm that's good, then we'll add in more tubes. Right now it's just the rectifier tube in it. So let's go ahead and turn it on and then we'll bring up the voltage. So right there is about 120 volts. And we're looking at negative 37 volts DC on the bias pot, which is, I think, going to be about perfect. The uh, schematic, I, I, if I remember correctly, is somewhere in the negative 42 range. Let me double check. Um, but it's pretty close to that for sure. Let's see. Negative 51. Um, but that is with a different wall voltage, obviously. So let's see what it gives us if we change it. Yeah, so right there where we can get it up to what the schematic calls for. And then we have range to go the other direction quite a bit to negative 34. So I think we'll probably start at negative 34 and then raise it up a little bit if we need. But for now, let's go ahead and turn it off and then we will add in more tubes and take out the current limiter. All right, so now we get to go ahead and try and bias this amp. We've got some... Um, JJ 606 GC tubes in here, and I've got my uh, bias probe from Eurotubes. So let's go ahead and turn it on and get the Variac going here. So Variac set to 120 volts. Now we'll go ahead and fire it on. And I've got the uh, Rob Robinette tube bias calculator that I always used for this. I'll put a link to this in the description if you're curious. Uh, I guess I can put a link to the Eurotubes bias probe as well. Um, so we're using 606 GC tubes. Levi, come here. There's some uh, newborn crying in the background. I'm <laughs> My dog is very confused by it. He still doesn't know what's going on here. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and flip it out of standby. All right, we can hear the amp is on and working. It's picking up my phone right now, which is hilarious, but ignore the little popping noises in the background, just me getting a text message. So now the plate to cathode voltage here is 400 and it's like 4, 410, 409. And then we're gonna go ahead, scroll down here to uh, tube dissipation using plate current. And so the plate current is 85, it says. That can't be right. Why is that so high? Or maybe it is, that's just how much range I have with this, with the new resistor in there. I didn't even think about that. Okay, let's turn it the other way. Let's see what this gives us. So I'm turning it, we can see it's adjusting it. We got a lot of range here actually. So let's sit around there, let's see what that gives us. So we got 446 volts DC and 30 for the plate current. And that puts us at, wow, this has got a huge range, holy cow. Um, so that puts us at 44%, so not quite. So let's go a little bit more. I'm, I'm going to shoot for about 60. So that is 46 on the plate current and 433, 
434 volts DC. That puts us at 66%. Um, I'm pretty good with that. So yeah, I think we're good to go there. Let's check the other tube now. Let me make a note of this. So now we're gonna switch the probe over to the other tube just to make sure that they're matched close enough to use together. All right, so now we got those swapped over. Let's go ahead and fire it back up. Get the calculator out. All right, so the last one was 66 and a half percent plate dissipation. Let's see what this gets. Ignore my phone again, it's making sound in the amp right now. So 434, that's the same, 46, the same. So these are perfectly matched. So exact same results for both tubes. So we are good to go. So now let's, um, let's do this and we will take the probe out and uh, plug a guitar in and make sure everything is working okay. And then we will try um, to confirm the tremolo works as well. But I will flip the chassis over so that I can actually um, see what's going on inside just in case the uh, roach isn't flickering, for example. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, we've got the chassis lifted and elevated now. Plug in the speaker cable. And now we're gonna check if the tremolo works. So I've got this little shorting RCA plug. Let me check the settings here. Put intensity to 10. Is that speed to like six? That should be enough to really hear it. All right, now let me go ahead and grab a guitar and we'll see if we're gonna need trim. All right, so we've got a guitar plugged in now. Let's go ahead and turn it on. We do. So the trem definitely works, but it appears that um, it's pretty weak, which I am going to assume is probably due to this right here, this replacement cap. I don't know what it is, um, obviously not original, and it might not be the right value. So I don't, I don't believe my um, uh, the new owner, my my. Um, bandmate ever uses trim. I'll ask him if he wants to swap that, but uh, it does work. It's just not super strong. So let's now go ahead and switch over. Wow. It's got a decent amount of uh, trim tick as well, which is not hard to rectify. Um, let's go ahead and check the normal channel now. So here's the normal channel. Uh, that works. So the amp sounds really healthy. It's quite quiet actually. Looks like we had a little, maybe a little dirt in some of the pots. Quite a lot in the reverb. But awesome, stoked, works great. So now I'm just gonna clean the pots and we can uh, install it back in the chassis and we'll confirm the reverb works.
Thank mm-hmm. you.